The purpose of this video is to explain to my communication circuits class the difference between frequency conversion and frequency inversion. Let's assume we have some frequencies and um, they're increasing in value so we have it's a bit on straight but that frequency is the axis and we're going to use the uh, television example uh, because it's the perfect example of color television let us say we have a sound and picture carrier okay so we're gonna call this sound carrier and uh, we're going to call this picture carrier so we're going to look at say channel 2 channel 2 television analog television the frequencies specified for channel 2 say that the sound carrier must be 59.2 sorry 0.75 59.75 megahertz okay and the picture subcarrier for channel 2 is at 55.25 55 now if it's a color television signal color television signal we're going to have between these we're going to have a color subcarrier and that's going to lie at 58.83 megahertz so the entire channel 2 is going to take up a bandwidth of 6 megahertz which is going to extend a little beyond the picture actual carrier frequency to accommodate some sidebands because clearly the difference between 55.25 and 59.75 is not 6 megahertz so the total channel is 6 megahertz these frequencies just sit between there okay so that's the channel 2 uh, if you like we can say that its start frequency is 1.25 below this so if we take away if we take away 1.25 we can say that the start frequency would be 54 right and the end frequency would be 60 Okay, so you understand what we're saying. We're saying that channel 2 is a composite signal that lies between 54 megahertz and 60 megahertz. So it's 6 megahertz wide and in there we have the picture carrier at exactly that, the sound carrier at exactly that and the color subcarrier at exactly that. Now, what are we going to do with this to convert it to an intermediate frequency? In uh, superheterodyne systems, which is what we were studying in radio, we use an oscillator, a local oscillator, and the frequency of the radio station was down converted to a lower frequency. In the case of AM radio, 
the local oscillator always runs 455 kilohertz above the particular radio station that you're trying to receive. Now television works on the same principle. So suppose we have up here, higher up above channel 2, we're running a local oscillator. What would its frequency be? Well, it's going to have a fixed frequency such that in the IF or intermediate frequency passband intermediate frequency IF for short pass band. Students are now familiar with the concept of filters. High pass, low pass, band pass or pass band, and notch or band reject. So those are the possible filters. So we have a band pass arrangement here so that our intermediate frequency is no longer just a single frequency but a pass band. Now it should become apparent to you that if we are sampling the difference between the local oscillator and the signal as we were doing in the case of radio The difference in frequency between the local oscillator and the sound carrier is going to be this. Whereas the difference between the local oscillator frequency and the color subcarrier is going to be this. And the difference in frequency between the local oscillator and the picture carrier is greater much greater than between the sound carrier because the sound carrier has the higher frequency and is therefore closer to the local oscillator frequency. Now, the system operates such that the sound carrier has an intermediate frequency of exactly 41.25. The color subcarrier is 42.17 and the picture intermediate frequency, the picture intermediate frequency is 45.25. Now, if we write down our intermediate frequency pass band say from low frequency to high frequency what have we got? We've got 41 this time we'll do it this way frequency is increasing so to the right We've got 41.25 there for our sound. Shortly above that, we're at 42. Color. 42.17. And then quite a little way away from that, 
we've got picture or video now why is this an example why is this an example of frequency inversion Well, when we invert something, we turn it around. And we see what is happening here. In the initial transmission, the sound carrier was highest in frequency. And the picture carrier was lowest in frequency. But... In the intermediate frequency plot, we see that the, the sound carrier is lowest in frequency, whereas it was highest in frequency here. And uh, the picture carrier, which was lowest in frequency, is now highest in frequency. So that is a complete inversion or reversal of the frequency band. We've turned the pass band upside down because the higher frequency is now the lower frequency and the lower frequency is now the higher frequency. And that will always happen when your channels, uh, carriers, subcarriers or whatever lie below, below the local oscillator. Okay, because we're always, the rule says that for the intermediate frequency, we're always sampling the difference. The difference between a fixed local oscillator frequency and the various frequencies of our carriers, subcarriers, or whatever. So obviously the one that's closest to the local oscillator is going to have the lowest frequency, but it's actually going to have the highest frequency in actual frequency of transmission. But in the intermediate frequency passband spectrum, it's going to have the lowest frequency. And the lowest frequency is going to be farthest away from the local oscillator. And it's going to have the highest frequency in the intermediate frequency passband within the receiver itself. Okay. So let us look what happens in frequency conversion now. Okay. In frequency conversion, which is primarily used in satellite systems, because we need to change, either raise or lower the frequency of a satellite transmission. Because when we transmit from the Earth station up to the satellite, it goes at a different frequency. The, the, the overall carrier is a, is a different frequency to the, to the other way around when it's coming back down to Earth. So up in the satellite, some frequency conversion has to take place to change the frequency of our television signal or whatever signal, digital signal, whatever, whatever signal it happens to be from one frequency to the other. And all frequency conversion uses the same principle, that is uh, um, a, an oscillator, a local oscillator, and some form of nonlinear mixing to uh, give us different products which can be extracted by reason of filtering. Okay, so suppose uh, just for this simple example, we will just take the same idea we have a frequency increasing frequency so let's just say we have uh, over this side we say we have channel 1 sorry or we, well, we could say channel 3 there we have channel 2 there we 
have channel one. And let us now put our local oscillator below. Now you can see that the order is preserved. Because in the in the uh, down converted in the down converted signal channel 1 is still going to have the lower frequency channel 2 is going to have the higher frequency and channel 3 is going to have the highest. So we have channel 1, channel 2, channel 3. Right. So you can see that to preserve conversion, to preserve the order 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3 with increasing frequency, one, two, and three with increasing frequency. We have to have the local oscillator below the actual frequencies. And to reverse and produce the inversion, we have to have the local oscillator higher. And then we will get the inversion because of the distance to the lowest is higher than the distance to the highest. So, thanks for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and I hope now you're a little wiser than you were before you watched my educational video. See you soon again.